Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and in this time of social distancing, staying at home, whatever you want to call it, I have had tons of conversations with many of the people that watch my channel, uh, some very lengthy ones over emails and Facebook, uh, one of which was out of Australia. This guy's name is Michael, and he's really trying to get him a machine together really wants to do it. I was unaware that they had such problems getting stuff shipped in to Australia. They actually have their own Amazon in Australia. Unaware. Who knew? I've also had a lengthy conversation with the doctor out of Texas. He's trying to do a topographical map and we're trying to figure out the 3D side on that to get everything just like right how he wants it. Psych doc, I'm probably not going to be able to answer that question today. Uh, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm still messing with it a little bit, but I haven't got it completely figured out, but we're not going to hit your question today. So obviously what I'm going to do today is talk some about the machine, try to answer some viewer questions, because I get a bunch of them all the time, and the biggest one I get is over this dude right here, the Iwata Revolution Airbrush. That's what I use is Iwata Revolution Airbrush. I get asked that at least three or four times a week. Which I don't mind answering. I mean, I'll tell you whatever I know about this stuff. So what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about the machine. I'm going to show you some of the measurements, kind of do a little rehash of part of the machine. Okay, so one of the questions is uh, how far is it from my tabletop to the bottom of my gantry and from the tabletop to the bottom of my spindle? There, you can see that I'm at 10 and 3 quarters inches to the, from the tabletop to the bottom of my gantry, and I am at five inches, I believe it's five, it's five inches from the tabletop to the bottom of the spindle. So another of my, of my questions was about my ball screw and my rails, and somebody noticed and made the comment that my ball screw is longer than my rail, and it's true. The ball screw is five foot long, the rail is four foot long. Reason I did that was I put the ball screw past both ends of the rail. That way it allows me full travel on the whole rail if I could utilize it. Now then, I really can't utilize the entire rail because there were some unforeseen things that I didn't think about. Uh, I can actually travel to this end, but going back the other way, I lose all the distance from right back here to my spindle because once this reaches the back end of the rail, my spindle's up here, and so I'll lose about a foot and a half. Didn't foresee that one. Not something I planned for. Had I planned for it, I'd have done longer rails, longer ball screw, and it would have given me more travel. So I mentioned Michael out of Australia, and uh, one of the things he's wondering is if I can, we can stack these. So could I either put the rail up above the ball screw, or put the ball screw above the rail and then have it still go slide along. I believe you actually can. It would be a tricky setup. You could probably put the rail above the ball screw with some kind of setup and it would allow you to utilize less space so this wouldn't be as wide as mine is. I'm not really sure if you'd get, have any benefit of that uh, other than saving maybe three or four inches width wise. I would, I'm not going to recommend somebody try it simply because it was going to take some engineering. I mean, you're really going to have to work at this and figure out how to make that stackable. And should you run into any problems with your ball screw, which is going to be on bottom, now you're in a bind because now this thing's covered up by your top rail. So I don't know about that. I, I'm sure it's possible and I'm sure some of the fancier machines are made that way just to conserve space. I didn't try it, I just did it the easiest way that I could see. Okay, so right here you're looking at my gantry and my two x-axis rails and my x-axis uh, ball screw. And so it's set up the same way. You can see that I'm sitting further behind the uh, rail with the ball screw and I passed it on the other end. That was to allow for full travel. What I didn't foresee is when this came up, it would actually touch the uh, part of my frame right here and I would lose the area from here to the center of my spindle both sides so I lost I don't know I think it's like eight inches 
on that right there. And so I lose that amount of travel on this side to side. So all this is a four by four table. I actually don't get four by four out of it. I actually get about 36 by about 34 out of this thing. So the next thing I get asked about is my gussets. These just add stability to my Z carrier, my Z axis right here, this big box. And it just adds stability so I won't do any flipping and flopping like that. It won't anyway, it's bolted to my plate in the back. And I've often said that I was gonna replace these with uh, aluminum as I've built a lot of stuff out of aluminum is. The plates that the gantry rides on are made out of aluminum. And this plate back here is made out of aluminum. I've just been lazy, I mean, let's be honest. I was just lazy. I haven't done it simply because I haven't had any problems out of these. And once I got this thing up and running, I just didn't do it. So something else somebody has pointed out to me here recently is look right here on the ends, I don't have any safeties. Uh, you can put limit switches on these, so when the machine comes too far, it automatically cuts itself off. I actually have limit switches. Again, I got it up and running, and I was ready to go, so I never took the time to put them on. So I don't have limit switches. So yes, I actually had just a little over $3,000 in this. Uh, 2,000 of it's actually software. Vectric Expire is very expensive. And, uh, and the reason I say a little over 3,000 because I don't remember exactly what Mach 3 cost me, but it was three or 400. It's the program that runs out here, it's the controller software. And so the biggest part of the money I have tied up in this is software. The rest of the stuff didn't cost as much to me because I already had the steel. I think I had to buy one piece of steel, the rest of it I already had here. So that's the main reason I ended up doing steel is because I already had the biggest part of the frame sitting out here in my yard. I could just weld it up and take off. So answering another question, this is what it looks like where I live. This is my backyard. The fence line's the end of my property. The rest of that is somebody else's. And as you can see, I can see for miles. I actually do live out in the country, just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There's very few houses around me. And it is a beautiful place. Just answering another question, somebody's always asking me, what does it look like around where you live? Because every time y'all see me, I'm in the shop. Well, I'm sure I didn't hit all the questions that I've had asked. Uh, I'm over here at the big shop now, which is right next door to my little CNC shop. And I try to answer the questions when I can, when I do one of these videos. I need to write them all down. I mean, that's just the truth of it. The reason I was able to hit on those few questions that were I answered over there were because they've been asked here real recently, and I've really been kind of wrapping my head around it to wondering how you'd do it. And like I said, I answered that other question. I showed around my backyard simply because I've had a couple of people ask, what does it look like where you live at? Because all we see is inside your shop. And so that's what it looks like. It is beautiful out here where I live. The one downfall about Southern Oklahoma is you're gonna deal with some really severe weather. We've had three weeks in a row where it's been tornadic activity and we've been fortunate this year. They've split us every time. Uh, the times that we had had tornadoes, we've had up anywhere from golf ball to softball size hail in various parts of the state. That too has fortunately missed us because that size of hell will come through your roof. So by all means, if you ever have questions about anything I'm doing over there or anything you wanna see made, shoot them to me. You can either do it on comments or you can do it on a email at smokycnc at gmail.com. And one thing I forgot to throw in that I'm gonna throw in, these t-shirts that I'm always wearing, they say Smoky CNC Woodworks, down below it says YouTube. Before long, I'm gonna be listing them down below on a link below each video and it'll take you to my website, my other channel's website, which is Smoky Uncuffed, and I'm gonna list them there. If you're interested in buying one, I'll have a way for you to click on it and go and put your size in. This is what my wife does. She makes these, so that'll be money going to her, but it is something that we'd like to get going for her. And since it's gonna be for her, I think it's only fair that we have to get her on here at some point, just so y'all can meet her, because I can never get her on the camera. She doesn't want to be on any videos, so which I get it. So another thing I'm going to shoot at you is, again, put it in the comments, email me, however you need to get hold of me. You can find me on Facebook at Smoky CNC Woodworks. And uh, 
what do you kind of want to see? I do plan on doing a little bit different stuff here this next few months. I am going to do some things that are more construction and with just a little bit of CNC involved where it's cutting parts for what I'm building and, uh, and maybe doing a little graving and stuff. I've got some plans for several things, but I just kind of need to know where y'all want to see me go because I can do a little bit of everything out here and it doesn't always have to be CNC, although I do enjoy it and it does make some really cool stuff. So guys, that's going to be about it. If y'all hadn't done so yet, please subscribe and don't forget about my Smokey Uncuffed. Go to www.smokeyuncuffed.com and you can check out my podcast right there or hear my podcast anywhere you want to listen to it or you can just run over to Smokey Uncuffed on YouTube. I've got a channel for it too. So guys, that's going to be it for today. Please subscribe and I'll see you all next time.